Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I, I really believe, as we're talking about change, that it's really timely for all that we're seeing going on in the world right now. Uh, for example, anyone here a, a football fan? More specifically, anyone a Jaguar fan? Wow, that, that's exactly what I'm talking about. We're looking at a team right now that's potentially going to make it to the Super Bowl. That alone is a su- the Jacksonville Jaguars. That alone is like the supernatural phenomenon that we're about to see this team possibly make it through, possibly make it through. We're talking about a team that in the last three seasons only had a total of 11 wins. But here they are, about to face the Patriots, about to go in for it and, and give it all they got. And they might make it. And they just might make it. But, but, but we're talking about uh, uh, the excitement that we're in, in in a time like this where there's all kinds of new things happening, all kinds of changes happening. Uh, you, have a, you have a lot of people right now that, that are, uh, you know, may not have been Jaguar fans, but... Or maybe they were Jaguar fans, but now they're digging themselves out of the cave. And they're like, here we are. We're ready for this. We're ready to take this on. We're ready to see something happen. Uh, and, and the Jaguars, let me tell you, I, I was reading up a little bit and from their, their owner um, who actually just bought them back recently. And uh, he was just talking about this is like your typical story of perseverance and, and how, look, so many times they've made it this far and not once have they broken through. Um, but he has faith in his team that they're going to break through. Uh, this very one, and they're ready for a change of course in their, in their team's history. They're ready for a new path, a new destiny. They're ready to be propelled forward um, into their ultimate destination as NFL champions. And so, look, naturally, we, we, we're, we're naturally inspired to change when we see change happening. See, them, them Jaguars, they're inspired for this championship because they saw some things happen. They started to see a change in their attitude, a change in in their team roster, a change in in ownership, a change in management, a change in whatever you you, want to call it. But now there's a bunch of people on that team. There's a bunch of fans in Jacksonville that are inspired to see change because change is right in front of them. What, what, what was potentially or what, what is currently a champion list team has the very much potential to now be champions. They have the potential, possibility, not saying it's going to happen, but it's possible. And the people of Jacksonville know that it's possible. So they're excited. The Jaguars, they're excited. So it's very natural for us to be inspired to want to change when we can see the change. It, it, it's, it's a natural tendency to even dislike change when we're not seeing it take place externally. When we're not seeing the change happen, you're not seeing your weight loss goals happen, your, your relationship goals aren't popping. They're not really like where you want them to be. Things in life aren't happening the way you wanted them to look like. So change externally isn't happening. So no one's inspired to want it. No one's inspired to want to see something happen differently. And so what happens is we don't see it. We don't pursue it. If we can't see it in front of us, it's not natural. It's not natural. It's not our first instinct to want to pursue it. Because that requires some digging. That requires some, some effort. That requires time. That requires uh, learning and having some, some, some mistakes along the way, some failures along the way that are going to teach you to change maybe a certain aspect of that, of that effort so you can achieve good results. But if we're not looking at it in front of us, if we're not seeing it, then for whatever reason, we don't tend to pursue it. In, a, in 3 John chapter 1, verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. He said that, that you would prosper in all things. Now, that could be things that are seen. That could be things that are not seen. But you would prosper in all things just like your soul does. In other words, my prayer, my hope, my desire is that you would prosper in all those things you can see just like you would prosper in that that you can't see. Uh, If you're prospering in your soul, I I desire for that to happen externally as well. But there has to be a prospering of the soul for the external prospering to be visible and to be evident and to happen. There has to be a change on the inside. Change that you cannot see 
is the only way for change that you can see to last. Change that, that is happening internally is the only way for that change on externally to happen. It's the only way for it to happen, but not just happen, it's the only way for it to actually last. That it's not going to be a momentary glitch. It's not going to be just a thing that you stumbled across and all of a sudden you find yourself in a gym now. I don't know how that happened. I ended up here for two weeks. But then that's gone, right? All of a sudden, like, it's not just a stumble upon thing. When you're changing on the inside of what cannot be seen, you're going to change some things on the outside, and that's going to last forever. Some examples, right? So, so when you're lifting weights or working out, um, you know, it's really easy to get inspired when you, someone tells you you have a brand new start or someone tells you there's a reward at the end of this or you got to start pitching in, you got to start putting a, this little pot in. You're like, yeah, okay, 80 bucks to the person who does this, this, and that. It's really easy to get inspired. Now you want to hit the gym. Now you want to lift those weights. But let me tell you, it's when you change your determination. It's when you change your habits of not wanting to make time to now I have to make some time, it's when you start to begin to, to change even your perception of why you're doing it, to, to not thinking short-term, but thinking the long-term results of why I'm doing this, and you're changing what cannot be seen, what other people aren't looking at, you're changing. And while you're changing those things that other people aren't looking at, they're going to start to see the results externally of what's happening. Because now you're committed. Now you're dedicated. Now there's no going back. Now I, I, I've made the effort, I've changed my mindset, I've changed my heart and how I feel about it. I've changed even what I believe about the gym. I used to hate the gym. Now I love the gym. That's not me speaking, I'm just speaking figuratively. <laughs> but the idea behind it, the idea behind it is that you're changing what cannot be seen. You're changing that because when you change what cannot be seen, there is an inspiration for you to want that to last. You wouldn't invest in something you cannot see if you didn't want it to last. You wouldn't invest into countless hours working on your marriage with getting counsel from someone, counts, uh, constant hours looking up articles, constant hours trying to see how to be a better spouse, how to be a better this, looking at blogs, looking at, at, at websites. You wouldn't spend all that time if you didn't care about how long it was going to last. But when you start to make a change on what's on so inside of you, then you start to see the results manifest on the outside. You know, memorizing Bible verses. Uh, for a long time, I used to always hear people say, you got to memorize the Bible. You have to memorize the verses. And I didn't know how. What are you talking about? This thing is huge. How are you going to memorize all these verses? How are you going to memorize this? But, but, but you see, the, the determination to memorize it and the motive to memorize it is what they were trying to say. Listen, not only are you memorizing it, but as you're memorizing, you're going to begin to live it. As you begin to live it, you're going to begin to believe it even more. As you begin to believe it even more, you're going to be effective in how you're sharing it. You're going to be effective in how it's seen and what's going to happen. Now, all that time you spent changing your, 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 your habits and, and, and building yourself up with the Bible, building yourself with Bible verses, all that time spent on that is now evident when you speak to people. And when someone comes to you and they need help for a situation, you're not just giving them your opinion. You're giving your, them something that's eternal, that's going to last. And so change that you cannot see is the only way for change that you can see to last. You want something on the outside to last, change what's on the inside. You want something to actually have a grip to it and actually you want to create a habit that's going to stick for once you're going to create a, a lifestyle that's actually going to stick past 21 days past 30 days past three months then start changing those things that people aren't looking at that's going to take a little extra work may hurt a little bit more may take a little bit more time but that's the only way that what's being seen is going to last that's the that's the kind of change that we we buck against, right? That's the kind of change that tends to cause discomfort because we aren't allowed to necessarily measure it. We can't measure necessarily what's happening on the inside as we're changing until we start to see it on the outside. And so because it's hard for us to measure it, ah, I don't want to I don't want to do that. I don't I don't want to change how I feel about that person who betrayed me because I haven't seen them start to change. 
I, I have, they haven't said anything to, to ask for forgiveness. They haven't said anything that would determine that they want changed or that they deserve my forgiveness. And so we, we can't measure what the success is. And so we kind of tend to, to draw back and we don't want to change those areas. We're, we're actually forced to blindly embrace this momentary discomfort. We're, we're walking around blind, and, 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 and we know that there's things that have to change, but we're, we're embracing the hits that, we, that we're taking because of it, and no one wants that. No one naturally wants that. And it's okay to acknowledge that because until you acknowledge that, you're going to keep walking blindly. You're going to keep walking like you don't want change. You're going to keep walking like nothing is wrong anyways. What needs to be fixed? If it's not fixed, don't, if it's not broken, don't fix it, right? So you're going you're gonna to keep walking that way. But when you acknowledge, when you acknowledge that there's some things that I, I've been holding in that people can't see, they, they see this, but they don't see what's inside. Until you acknowledge that there's some change that needs to happen there, this is going to get old real quick. I'm telling you, this, this is going to fade. And you're going to not be able to hide it for long. That, that elastic's going to fall all apart. That mask is going to start sliding, going to get hot, hot and sweaty. You're going to have to take it off. And now people are going to start to see that one thing you were so stubborn to change. Because you were able to stick it out just a little bit longer. I want to I wanna take us to to a scripture where I can explain this to you guys in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And this is what the, the Good News Bible translation says. It says, for this reason, we never become discouraged. Even though our physical being is gradually decaying, yet our spiritual being is renewed day after day. Our physical being is gradually decaying Yet our spiritual being is renewed day after day. And this small and temporary trouble we suffer will bring us a tremendous and eternal glory. How is it that those two can be a part of one sentence? That this small and temporary trouble that we suffer will bring us tremendous, unfathomable, wondrous glory. For eternity, this small, this tiny, itty-bitty trouble that you suffer is going to bring the greatest, most significant moment of glory that you've ever experienced. For we fix our attention not on things that are what? But on things that are... We fix our attention not on what? We fix our attention not on things that are seen, but on things that are unseen. What can be seen lasts only for a time, but what cannot be seen, it lasts forever. Change that cannot be seen is the only way for change that you can see to last forever. That's the only way. There has to be a willingness to decide to change the way you, you, you handle yourself, bad habits that you've, you've accrued over the years because of experiences, things that you have just kind of held inside and not wanted to show anyone, emotions that you've kind of tucked away because someone pointed out that weak emotion at one point. Someone pointed out the way you poorly handled a situation, and so you're going you're gonna to tuck that feeling away. And you're going to be stubborn about it. But the only way for you to grow from that area is if you change it even when it can't be seen. You know what? You may, you may even have people that talk about the way you talk. They talk about how maybe you handle yourself. And so for you, you're thinking, well, they still think bad of me anyways. Why should I bother messing with this area if they still think about me this certain way? It doesn't matter. Because you desire for it to change. It's your responsibility to make that happen. When you make that happen is when it's going to have to come out and people are going to have to see that something is changing. See, but there's like this, there's this, there's this gap that, that we don't, we never like to face, right? Kind of like, kind of like when you're working out too, right? You get to a point where there's this plateau. Things just aren't happening anymore. Things aren't changing externally the way you would like to see them happen. 
things are still being challenged. There's still motion happening. You're still lifting the weights. You're still running on the treadmill. You're still going the extra mile. You're still doing this, still doing that. You're still staying active. You're still eating healthy, but you've reached a plateau. But yet, but yet, for whatever reason, that's usually the point when people tend to drop out. No more of that. When all it took was you just deciding to change the course of what you were doing in that exercise. All you had to do was change your routine up. All you had to do was change whether you did push-ups first or pull-ups first. That's all you had to do, and your body would have responded externally. But we tend to slow down when we're not seeing something happen. You know, you, you hear a lot of interviews today uh, with Kobe Bryant, and, and you see, like, and, he, and, and, and you hear it everywhere of his uh, achievements when he was an athlete and and it's awesome how what you're hearing the most come out of these interviews uh, is it, the most commonly shared information is how hard that man worked behind closed doors, how much harder he worked than any, any man who's ever hit the court. Now, now all his stats and all his, his, his moments and highlights, <coughs> you can find those on, on the Internet, on YouTube, on ESPN. Yeah, you can find all that, but that's momentary. What that man will be known for forever was that he worked harder than anyone when no one else wanted to. What people are always going to talk about for years to come, for generations to come, what every a rookie, a basketball player, new recruit, whatever, what, what every, every player is going to talk about long after you have no more access to those great moments is how hard that man worked. Is how he was willing to stay hours extra even, even on his days off. That is what's going to last forever. His achievements were celebrated momentarily, but his ethic was celebrated forever. What was on the inside of him is what made Kobe Bryant, not what he accomplished physically, but what he decided to do, his determination, his willingness to go above and beyond, his dedication to be the best player that ever played the game. And that same principle, it applies to us as we fast. See, Kobe didn't parade around talking about how much time he spent in the gym. He didn't, he didn't parade around talking about this is what I did. I have a log of this many hours. These are the routine that I did. You had to catch him in the gym, your own self, to know that that's what he was even doing. He didn't, he didn't go around with a big banner on his back saying, I'm striving to be the best. Find me at the gym. But it showed in results of how he performed on the court. Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 to 18 says this, and I didn't give this to media, so write this down or go there in your Bibles. Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 to 18 says, and when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do. This is Jesus talking. Stop making it all obvious. Stop making it a show. Stop telling the world just like the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled. They look like a hot mess all over the place. What is wrong with you? You are sick. You're not fasting. You are not okay. And they want that. And they want that attention. That's what he's talking about. They, they want pity. They want someone to feel like, man, man, you must really love God if you're going to be looking like that. Oh, my God. <coughs> Smell and everything. You must really. That's, that's, what, that's the attention they were aiming for. They wanted pity. They wanted someone to come on, pat them on the back like, man, I know you got back sores, but keep going. Keep going. I tell you the truth, Jesus says, that is the only reward they will ever get. A nice pat on the back. A nice, a nice smile of admiration. A nice woe is you for having to suffer because you're fasting. That's the greatest reward they're going to get. Verse 17, but when you fast, man, put some pomade in your hair. Bust out the Neutrogena, wash that face, get all in the creases, just get all in there. Do something, look presentable, look like you actually care about what's about to take place externally just as it's taking place internally. Uh, look, look like you, you actually care that God is exploding and giving you a greater portion of his glory by you fasting instead of walking around looking like God left you. With spider webs. 
then no one will notice that you are fasting except your father who knows what you do in private and your father who sees everything he's going to be your greatest reward he's going to reward you see change that is not happening externally is only because there's resistance to change internally and when we are fasting we are fasting simply to fix our eyes on what isn't seen. Come on, when you're fasting, you're depriving your natural body of certain things in order so your spiritual self can connect deeper with a God that you can't see with your own two eyes. So for me, what's the point of looking like a hot mess if you can't even see God? What's he, what's the, what, who are you impressing? See, what Jesus was pointing out was was not necessarily what they were doing externally, but he was trying to get to the bottom of what was happening inside their heart. He was trying to get to the bottom of who their heart said that they were. He was trying to get to the bottom of their character, of their whole being, and why they were doing what they were doing. Because what they were doing wasn't to seek God, it was to seek man. Their fast wasn't a Daniel's fast to draw closer and to get more of God. It was to get more, I'm sorry, you're great, you're a hero, Look at you, approval. Approval. Approval which is not going to last forever. So they sacrificed and surrendered an eternal glory that would last forever for a moment of happiness. For a moment of, man, you're doing great. And a lot of times we surrender what we value, what we care for, what convicts us. We surrender and we sacrifice that. Just for a moment of, wow, great job. Man, you really, you, really, uh, you really prayed hard for that. You really, you really know what you're doing. God told Samuel when he, Samuel was picking the king, the, the, the anointing the king of Israel, Samuel, you're a fool if you're going to look at what's on the outside. That's not going to last you look on the outside, I'm looking for the heart. When you're fasting, God is looking for your heart. He's looking for what exactly are you up against. See, you're, you're, you're drawing in to him and you can't see him, but his glory is going to outweigh whatever trouble you're facing. Whatever you're fasting for to get breakthrough for, whatever you're fasting for to overcome, maybe you're trying to overcome an addiction, you're trying to overcome a mindset, you're trying to overcome a lifestyle, and you're fasting and you're praying and you're hoping that through this that I would overcome that. Well, it says that when you draw close to him, that his glory is going to far outweigh that. Not only are you going to overcome, but you're going to be brought into a place of awe as well. You're going to be left with your mouth wide open, jaw dropping to the floor. How in the world was this possible? That's what happens. That's the reward that comes from the fast that you do when you decide to change what cannot be seen. Maybe you're, you're, you're facing some trouble and maybe you've been dealing with, with guilt of a, of a past life that you've lived, of things that you've done in the past, decisions that you've made in the past, and, and you've been, man, this, this guilt has been weighing your heart down. And only you can see that guilt. <clears throat> no one else can see that guilt. No one else knows the torment that you're faced with when they look at you and in your mind you're thinking, what was I thinking? How could I have done that? How can I have even decided to enter into that decision? And so now you're battling with that guilt. Those thoughts are haunting you. Let me tell you, when you fast and you pray, you're drawing close to a God that can far outweigh that guilt. He can dismantle every ounce, every thought of that guilt with just simply his presence as you seek him. With just simply his power as you decide to press in and worship him. As you decide to humble yourself and pray. As you decide, as you decide, just one quick decision. I'm going to for a moment change some things on the inside of me. And change how I've been handling this guilt. And I'm just going to for one moment surrender to God. In, in the hopes that he can 
overcome this. And let me tell you, he says that he will far outweigh with his glory that small trouble, that small moment. Maybe you, you're having a momentary trouble trying to get past a betrayal. Maybe there's been someone who, who's came into your life and you developed a great sense of trust with and you, you, you became really close. You depended on each other. You needed each other. And that person betrayed you. And that sting of that betrayal has been so hard to get past. As you fast and as you pray, God's going to confirm to you his friendship. He's going to begin to reaffirm that he is closer to you than a brother. That he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. That he calls you by name, not by your sin. Not by the hurt. He calls you by name. And because he calls you by name, that's a relationship that you'll never have to worry about betrayal with. Because he knows you and he cares for you. See, when you decide to change then in that moment what's on the inside, you decide to address what other people can't see. What happens in result to that is what's going to be celebrated. What happens in result to that is what's going to display the hard work that you put in, the commitment that you put in, the time and the effort, the time of the, the nights of crying because you just needed to break through this feeling of guilt, this feeling of shame, this feeling of I can't, I can't forgive that person. It says, and this small and temporary trouble that we suffer will bring us a tremendous and eternal glory. Much greater than the trouble. We fix our attention not on things that are seen, but on things that are unseen. Jeremiah 29, 11, uh, you know, we, we all know this verse. And, and if we don't know it, then I, I know that we've at least heard this at one point or another. But it says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans of a hope. And a future, you know, this word prosper that, that, that I'm using today as we talked about in, in Third John and as we're talking about here in Jeremiah, you know, prosper, it's it, it simply what it means is progress. It, it's propelling forward to your destination. It's movement that's happening that's allowing you to get closer and closer to where you're supposed to be. Prospering to get you where you need to be. And so when, when God says that, that I know the plans that I have for you, I know that my plans are simply to get you to your destination. See, God has always had every intention for you to embrace change. Because you cannot progress without embracing change of those things that cannot be seen. You'll never get past into your next season of where you're supposed to be in life. If you're still holding on to those old habits of the past. And so God knows that. That's why he lets you know, listen, I have a hope for you. I have a future. That future is to propel you forward. That future is to prosper you in all things, just like your soul prospers. That future is to get you to a place where you are now embracing his sufficiency in all things. And if you can simply make that decision to change, even when you, imagine, imagine the strength, man, that, that will come from you being able to make that decision to change even if you can't see the results. Ima ima just imagine, imagine now the courage that develops from being able to change your thought about that person who betrayed you even if they haven't asked for forgiveness. The courage you would have. Imagine the strength that will start to develop in you when you decide to make decisions for the better of your family. Even when everyone else has doubted those decisions. You're, you're, you're deciding to, to move your family forward and... And you guys want more of God. And so you want to start attending church more. But no one understands how attending church is going to fix your problems. Well, let me tell you. Change that they can't see 
is going to last forever. You simply making that decision, that could change your family for the rest of their life. That could change every decision that's made after that for the better. Making that decision to befriend even, draw closer to, spend more time with Jesus this year. You, you may not understand him completely. You may not even understand the benefit of knowing him. You may not even understand the whole makeup of who he is. You may not even know or even care to know about what he thinks about you. But let me tell you, that decision, that decision will propel you forward to exactly how he created you to be. And to now enter into the plans that he has for you. It's a decision. As we are fasting for change, as we are fasting so that we can change some things on the inside of us, we're fasting to allow God and to invite him to overcome and overwhelm us with his glory. That's what we're doing. We want his presence like we've never seen it before. You want his presence in your life like you've never seen it before. And listen, that's not going to come just from starving yourself. That's not going to come just from denying yourself certain things. No, that's going to come with a heart's intention, that heart that no one else can see, that, that motive that no one else knows but you, but because you know what you're facing, because you know that challenge you have, because you know that trouble that's almost choking you out, and, and because you know that, you know what's happening, that decision at that moment, you're fasting for that, man, the reward is going to far outweigh any pain that that thing has left you in your life. Any ounce of, of hurt that that trouble has caused you, any discomfort, any kind of inconvenience, any kind of challenging, all those nights of pain and crying and wondering when is healing going to come, wondering all the questions, he said he far outweighs that. He not only redeems it, man, he doubles it. He makes up for it and some. He brings you freedom and he brings you the power to go on further. Do you get what I'm saying tonight? Change that you cannot see, though you can't see it, will last and allow that change that everyone can see to last long, to last for eternity. Once you decide to make that change, that's when you start to see things start to, to, to kind of come together and then everything starts to make sense now and now people are watching your life and they're, they're watching you and, and how you've developed this new sense of strength. And now what you have done is you created a chain reaction. And now, because it's our natural tendency to be inspired to change when we see someone, you just cause someone else to have the inspiration to make a move the way you have. See, you have that power. You have that power. What you need to do today is surrender trying to measure it by what is in front of you. And instead measure by the time and effort that you have spent to, to surrender yourself and say, God, it's time for change. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.